guys, welcome back to The Family Fudge. My name is Jennifer, and today we're gonna to be talking about freezer meals, specifically chicken-based freezer meals that are not too bad for you and that are also budget-friendly. The Family Fudge, The Family Fudge. They are mostly sweet but full of nuts. Okay, so right now we're still in the first month of the new year. And I know a lot of people, myself included, may have made some New Year's resolutions to number one, eat healthier, and number two, stay on budget. So today, these recipes that I'm going to share with you do those things. They are not super bad for you, they're on the healthier side, and they are less than $10 per dinner. Now I do know that there are a lot of people that are anti New Year's resolutions, and I totally get that. And I think it's because you know what they say about New Year's resolutions. Unless you have a plan in place to make those goals a reality, those resolutions are just dreams and they're not gonna happen. So today I'm gonna show you how you can make those happen. I'm gonna give you the plan, I'm gonna give you the recipes, so come along with me. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is print out the recipes. Now these are my personal recipes um, that I've adapted to my family's tastes. And I'm gonna go ahead and put those on thefamilyfudge.com. If you wanna hop on over there and print those out, they will be available for you, for free, of course. And so, what I'm going to be making is Hawaiian chicken, ranch chicken, that's for tacos, chicken Philly cheesesteak, chicken sausage with peppers, chicken fajitas, and Italian chicken. Now today I'm just gonna be making one of each of these, but definitely if you're feeling ambitious, you could double each of these recipes and be left with 12 at the end of the day. But for my family and for my size freezer, I'm just gonna make six today. These meals are so easy, it's really just chop some veggies and then dump everything else in a bag. And then the bags will come out of the freezer when you're ready to cook them and they can go directly into a slow cooker. Super easy, super affordable, and not too bad for you. I do want to let you know that I'm going to be using a variety of boneless skinless chicken breasts, boneless skinless chicken thighs, and some store prepared raw chicken sausage. Feel free to use any cut of chicken you prefer, but these ones tend to be a great deal. All of these recipes are going to be stored in gallon size freezer bags. Now I'm going to start labeling my Ziploc bags. There's about two pounds of meat going into each of these recipes because that's about the right size for my family. That's about the amount that we usually would eat. But if you have a lot of people in your family, or teenagers that eat a lot of food, you might need two recipes per meal to feed everybody. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and write the name of the dish, today's date. I could add some cooking instructions or other reminders on there, but I'm just gonna keep it simple with the name of what it is and the date. Labeling these ahead of time is gonna make it really easy to just dump everything in later. All right, so I went through all of my recipes and found out how many peppers and onions and garlic I was gonna need. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wash and chop all of the veggies all at once, and that's gonna make it really quick and easy to just dump them in the bags. I have to tell you, my husband just walked in and he said, ooh, what smells so good? Are you making salsa? And I said, no, I'm not making salsa, but that's a good idea. If you guys have a great salsa recipe, link it down below and I will make that because salsa sounds really good right now. <laughs> okay, so now I think I'm gonna show you meal by meal what needs to go in each bag. You know, you could go ahead and put all of your onions in all the bags, and then all the peppers in all the bags. But I don't wanna get confused, I'm just gonna make one bag at a time. Now, I don't think it matters what order you make these in, you can do it in any order you want. I grabbed this bag of Italian chicken first, so that's what I'm gonna do first. Now, I know they sell fancy, you know, stands to keep your 
bags open while you're filling them, but I don't have those. So I'm just gonna stick it down inside of a bowl and the bowl will help keep it open enough <laughs> for me to put my stuff in there. All right, I've got two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I'm gonna put one cup of my chopped onion in there. Two cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna eyeball that as well. One quarter cup of honey. Next up is two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I guess you could substitute coconut oil too if you wanted. Two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. This is dried Italian seasoning. One, two, half a teaspoon of salt. A quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And then I'm going to add just a pinch of red pepper flakes. My family, we don't like things super spicy, but I'm trying to introduce the kids to more spice. So just a little bit to get them used to it. All right, so the last thing I need in here are two regular size cans, that's about 15 ounces, of diced tomatoes. I'm gonna to pour that in along with the juice. I'm gonna to try to squeeze some of this air out before I zip it up. Lay it flat. And before I move on to my next bag, I'm gonna stick this in the freezer right now. So, when you're ready to cook this, you're gonna take it out of the freezer and you could defrost it overnight or you could just put the whole thing in your crock pot for four to six hours and it'll be done. You could serve this over noodles or with a salad on the side. One down, five to go. Next up is a family favorite. We have chicken sausage with peppers. This one is so quick and easy. I'm gonna stick this down into my bowl. Now I have two pounds of store prepared chicken sausage, and this is sweet Italian sausage, and this is in the casing already. I'm gonna go ahead and put all of them down in my bag. Now this meal, you could throw it in the crock pot to cook it, but you also could just throw it on the stove. Either way is, is fine. Now these are lean chicken sausages, so I'm not worried about them being super greasy. That's the great thing about chicken. So to this, I'm gonna add one cup uh, about one cup of my chopped onions. There we go. To this I added some of my red bell pepper and some of my green. It's about one whole um, pepper's worth in there. To this I'm gonna add about one clove of garlic, half a teaspoon of salt, and quarter teaspoon of pepper. And that's all for this dish. That's all you need. Super easy, simple and quick. I'm try to lay this flat the best I can. Get some of the extra air out of there. So when we cook this up, we like to serve it with some rice or you could put it on a sandwich. It would be so good. Two down, four more to go. I'm gonna move on to Hawaiian chicken. All right, I'm gonna start with two pounds of chicken breasts. All right. Half a cup of honey. This is gonna be like a sweet and savory dish. Half a cup of apple cider vinegar. To this I'm gonna add about two to three cloves of garlic. Yum, it smells so good already. Now I'm gonna add two tablespoons of soy sauce. I'm using the gluten-free low sodium one, but you can use whatever one you prefer. There we go. Okay, next comes the pineapple. So this is a 20 ounce can. So I'm gonna put about half of the pineapple in here and about half of the juice. And I'm sure my kids will love to snack on the leftovers. Ooh, I love pineapple, you guys. One of my favorite treats at Disneyland is a pineapple Dole Whip. That is my, one of my favorites. It is so yummy and refreshing, so good. Here's about half the juice. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna let the kids finish this. 
And believe it or not, that is it for this dish. I'm not gonna add any salt or pepper at this time because there is soy sauce in there, but you can definitely add salt to your tastes later. <clears throat> okay, so this bag, this bag is pretty liquidy, so be careful when you're trying to get out, out that extra air. You don't let it spill everywhere. All right, that one was super quick and easy. When I'm ready to cook this, I'm gonna take it out of the freezer and either let it defrost overnight or stick it directly into my crock pot for about four to six hours. And we'll probably eat this with rice and broccoli because that's kind of our favorite thing. All right, three down, three more to go. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna do a little bit of tidying up. It definitely helps if you are able to do some cleaning as you go. Next up, we have chicken Philly cheesesteaks. Now, I've never been to Philly, so I can't tell you how authentic this is, but it's going to be good, I know that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put two pounds of chicken breasts in this bag. Okay, so I haven't been mentioning this, but make sure you're washing your hands often between touching the chicken. So to this, I'm gonna add one chopped up onion, so that's about a cup. Now I put in about one pepper's worth of red peppers and one pepper's worth of green peppers. And then I'm gonna add about two cloves of garlic, crushed up. I have half a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Now we don't, we don't usually make things super salty here, but if you want more salt, feel free. To this bag, I'm gonna go ahead and add about two tablespoons of cornstarch because we don't want this to be too wet. That's gonna help it have a thicker sauce. That is it, I'm going to close up this bag, get out a lot of the air. I'm gonna to want to kind of shake this around to distribute that cornstarch. This is Philly cheesesteaks, so of course you're gonna need some cheese. Now I almost always have cheese on hand because it's one of my kids' favorite snacks, but you could actually freeze in a separate bag your cheese and store it together. That way you'd be sure to have it when you need it. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm not worried about not having cheese because I almost always do. When I'm ready to cook this, I'm going to remove it from the freezer and either let it defrost or you can probably just cook it right from frozen. It's gonna take about four to six hours on low and then I'm going to shred it up. So this won't be like sliced up Philly cheesesteaks. It's gonna be more of a shredded kind, but that just makes it really easy. All right, two more to go. Next up, we're gonna have ranch chicken tacos. To this, I'm going to be using two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Okay, to this, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Now to this I'm gonna add one package of ranch seasoning, or in this case, three tablespoons. And then one package of taco seasoning, or about quarter, a quarter cup of this one. So to this, I'm not gonna add any more salt or pepper because we've got salt and pepper in there already. So now I'm just gonna close this up, get that air out of there. Pretty much all the same cooking instructions for these. You know, you cook it on low for about six to eight hours or on high for four to six hours. So when these are done, I'm going to shred them up and put them into some tacos, like some soft tacos. Burritos would be delicious. One more to go. All right guys, are you still with me? I'm on my last bag, which is gonna be chicken fajitas. Now these are gonna be made in the crock pot, so it's not exactly like <laughs> you know you would get in a restaurant, but it's good enough for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two pounds of chicken breast this time. To this I'm gonna add the rest of my onions, which is about one onion's worth. I'm gonna add the rest of my bell peppers, 
which is about one red bell pepper's worth and one green bell pepper's worth. So that worked out just right. You know, sometimes when you eyeball things, you never know. Then I'm gonna add the rest of my garlic. This is again about two to three cloves of garlic. I'm gonna add about one tablespoon of honey. I don't know if honey is a traditional ingredient for fajitas, but it makes this so good. That little bit of sweetness in there, it is delicious. Next up is one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. About one tablespoon of chili powder. It sounds like a lot of chili powder, but it really doesn't make it too spicy. My kids will eat it. About two teaspoons of cumin. One. Two. And then for my family, just a teeny tiny pinch of red pepper flakes. Really small. If you don't like spice, you can just leave it out completely. Squish some of that air out of there and get that to lay down flat. Okay, chicken fajitas are done. So, just like everything else, this is gonna go in their crock pot on low for about six to eight hours, or on high for about four to six hours. These are gonna be shredded up style fajitas because that's just easy. I'm gonna put this on some corn tortillas, sour cream and cheese on top. It'll be delicious. <laughs> okay guys, here's a dose of reality for you. Quite a lot of things to clean up. There we have all of the freezer meals. Now this took me a little bit over an hour. I had to stop a couple of times and help my kids. So one of the fast things about doing it this way is that I didn't actually have to chop any of this meat. There we go, I gotta go stick them all back in the freezer. All right guys, there you have it. Thank you for joining me today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below if you enjoy watching freezer meal cooking videos because I have lots of ideas for future videos if you guys would like to see them. Thanks for watching, see you next time.